Bench 1775 sits breathtakingly above Okanagan Lake, some 10 minutes north of the town of Penticton, British Columbia. Valeria Tate is the GM, winemaker and viticulturalist, and a BC native who's been part of the modern-day wine industry since the late 1980s. Her perspective and passion for the Okanagan is matched by few others. Well, you got started as a molecular biologist. Actually, that's what brought me to the valley. I came from Vancouver and I was a plant virologist, so I was studying viruses, particularly in grapevines. Yeah. And this was the beginning of the, well, it was back in the day, in uh, the late 80s, 1990. Was there anything that you particularly learned then that is helping you today? Uh, here in Naramata? Yeah, I learned that people desperately needed the services of a viticulturist. <laughs> so I went back to university and studied enology and viticulture. Yeah. And uh, that, at that time I recognized viticulture's importance. Well, why did you come here uh, to Naramata? Wow, it's a, an incredibly beautiful place to live, but also it's an incredibly great place to grow grapes. What are some of the aspects of Naramata? Like we have the influence of a great body of water here, yeah. and we have a western exposure on our slopes. So it makes for a great afternoon sun, but with the lake moderating the temperature so it doesn't get too hot. And in the winters, it doesn't get too cold, again, because of the, this big body of water. And the soils are very good at holding moisture, which is unusual in the Okanagan. I'm wondering what you think about the notion of a place like Burgundy, where they only grow Pinot Noir, mm. and Naramata, where it seems like they grow everything. But I think what's happened is a lot of different personalities and different palettes have moved here, and everybody has planted their love. And surprisingly, a lot of things will grow depending on the site, the exposure, and not everything grew well, so those were pulled out, but you still will see quite a large variety of, of uh, different, different styles of wine grapes and different styles of wines that are being made here, and luckily the sites support them. How do you decide that you might experiment with some different wines? Sometimes I don't know at all. It's uh, driven literally by how the fruit is tasting, and I've been involved in the wine industry 27 years and every year completely different climate conditions deliver completely different ripening curves on all the different varieties and so I will walk through the vineyards tasting extensively and I'll taste something that I think, hey, this would be really interesting to turn into a wine. Val, when I first came to the valley, we would, we would say, hey, this Bordeaux style wine's not very good. Now mm. we don't talk so much about Bordeaux or Burgundy, is that a good thing? I think in the beginning there wasn't confidence and so a lot of producers were trying to emulate what was recognizable mm -hmm. from the rest of the world. Uh, from that we've got an evolution where people are going, you know, this fruit is very interesting on its own right and let's just experiment and make a wine that reflects that fruit and very exciting wines are being made now. How do you connect with your customers? Like you're a, really a new winery mm -hmm. uh, in the true sense of, you know, open for a couple of years. I think the way to connect with people is emotionally and to really share wine with people. Uh, I feel like wine is a lifestyle. It's part of your social interactions and I want to be part of those social interactions. You do a picnic thing here. Yes. Has that worked out well? It's worked out really well and, and in fact we opened a bistro last year and we still have saved the best spots on the on the patio for our picnic guests. Yeah. And we want to encourage them to please try the wines. You know, it's about wine and food, so if people don't want to eat with us, they can bring their own food. So you're working with a you know, a number of vineyards on mm -hmm. in Naramata and outside of Naramata making mm -hmm quite a range of wines. We have our core production, which we sell throughout BC and Alberta, yeah. mostly BC, but I also make small lot wines that are available to wine club members, and wine club members would get access to these wines. Be first in line, they yeah. get special reserve, also library releases of wines that I've held back. I really believe in aging wines, so it's fabulous to be able to have those available for our wine club members. I cringe when I hear people say, you know, we're gonna be the Napa of the North in that. What, mm. Do you think that we, have found our mojo? I think that definitely there's a lot of capital or people with money investing in yeah. the industry which is really bringing up the quality expectations and also what's being produced but you know I hope that there's still going to be room for small players who will still be able to put out very interesting products and small quantities that are 
that can be experimental. Do you do we know what we want to be in BC yet? Or, or? I, I think people are very excited and really committed to producing beautiful wines that reflect the place. Yeah. And I think that that's going to become more and more important for sure. People are strongly identified with the land. So if I come back and see in 10 years, will we, will we still be hopefully searching for what we are? Well, I, you know, I think that um, we're one of the youngest wine regions in the world. And I think it's naive to think that we've arrived with a complete understanding of who we are. I, I hope that we continue to grow and experiment. And I hope that um, our industry continues to attract all kinds of different demographics, different people, quirky people, and experimentation continues and, you know, not get locked into an idea because nowhere else in the world is this place and I think that that is a unique identifier that sets us apart and yeah. we need to capitalize on that.